Well, welcome home, church. I'm waiting for the other two pastors to join me up here. It's okay, so, Pastor Rob, I got you. Welcome uh, home, church. I got church. Allie here, so it's <laughs> awesome to have Allie here. So what an exciting day. Everybody feel excited for today? I mean, this is just a huge opportunity. And Bill, you can come on up here. So even with your coffee and Pastor Mark somewhere around here. Yeah, welcome home. There you go. Here comes Pastor Mark. Your microphone's down there. Um, yeah, your mic's right there, guys, if you need a mic. <laughs> Maya, you bring it up here for us. So. Just, just scream. Here you go. So um, what a terrific day it is, though. I mean, this is sort of the culmination of our series. But the key thing we want you to realize is that this is not something that's a one-day event. This hopefully is the beginning of something great here in Decatur as we love Decatur in a way that only God can do through us. So today as we begin though, you know, I just feel it's important for us to be conscious of what's happening throughout the world. And so what I'd love to do is before we really jump into this morning is for us to take some time and pray for the situation in Ukraine because that's something that we need God's inter intervention in and God to truly change hearts and minds in that situation. So would you bow your heads and pray? But well, Lord, we just come to you this morning in some ways without words. We see what's happening over in Ukraine and, and Lord, it just breaks our hearts and and Lord, we just pray for the people of Ukraine that Lord, you would protect them. That Lord, you would provide a shield for them at this time. That Lord, you would raise up individuals and countries and people from around this world to go to their aid and to help them. That Lord, we want peace to be what happens throughout this world but it looks like right now, Lord, there's nothing but war there in Ukraine. And Lord, we ask that somehow you would intervene so that, Lord, that would stop. That you would change the heart of Putin, change the heart of those soldiers who are fighting. And that, Lord, you would allow this whole thing to just go away. That, Lord, you would allow this not to spread through, through sort of discourse and discord from all these other countries throughout the world as well. And that, Lord, everyone would just seek your guidance so that, Lord, you could be glorified instead of the tragedy that we see happening today. We know that there are loved ones and friends and relatives, Lord, that are being called up into duty as well at this time. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would protect them for the families that are left behind, that you would comfort them. And that Lord, as we show love to this community, that Lord, we would not forget about showing love to those who are closest to us, those families who may be in need because of their husbands or wives or daughters or sons going off to some place in this world. That Lord, if they have needs, that we would be able to fulfill those. Lord, during this, this time as well, I'm just going to give a moment of silence here for us to lift up any specific prayer concerns we have. And Lord, we ask that you hear our voices at this time. Lord, I just have pressing on my heart right now that, you, that we pray specifically for the Christians there in Ukraine. As we see some videos that came out of them being strong and standing, just singing praise songs to you, Lord, knowing you are in the middle of that whole situation. And so, Lord, we ask that you would protect them, that there would be no persecution, and that, Lord, you would bring this situation to close. We just lift this in your name today. 
I pray this all in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's worship.
So just I uh, wanted to share a couple of scriptures with you today, some that we went through for uh, 1 John. Um, and this is from 1 John chapter 3. These words I thought were very sort of fitting for today. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. I mean, what great words those are as we head out today and really serve the way that, that God has sort of called us to serve. Now, I know this is unusual, but I'm going to read from the Message Bible. Is that okay? So here's the same text in the Message Bible. I just love the way this is phrased. This is how we've come to understand and experience love. Christ sacrificed his life for us. This is why we ought to live sacrificially for our fellow brothers and not just be out for ourselves. If you see some brother or sister in need and have means to do something about it, but turn a cold shoulder and do nothing, what happens to God's love? It disappears. And you made it disappear. Isn't that harsh? But isn't that true? If we have the ability to do something right here in Decatur, if we have the ability to show Christ's love in this place every day, every way, by serving those who are in need, those who don't have what we have, those who are broken, and those who just need help, but we turn our our shoulder to them and don't do it, well, God's love disappears. And today is about making sure that God's love is shown throughout this community where we're going to serve. The text goes on and says this, My dear children, let's not just talk about love, let's practice real love. This is the only way we'll know we're living truly, living in God's reality. What do you think of that? It's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, this is just the Message Bible. Sometimes it's good to read those things and know that truly what we are doing here today is what God has called us to do, to go out and share his love and grace. And in James, we also read this text. It says, religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. See, we are called, as we've said over the last few weeks, to go and share Christ's love, to go and love this community any way that we have a means to do so. And today, I thank God that each of you are here and that you are actually taking part in this because this is why this church is here, is to love on this community any way that we can and share the word of Christ. So today I pray that you will have an opportunity to go out and serve, yes, to show Christ's love, yes. But if the opportunity is there to share what Christ means for you and to share Christ's love and the gospel with them. So I pray that that happens today. Would you join me in a time of prayer? I'm going to ask Mark and Bill to come forward as well. Allie, if you want to come out here as well, and we'll just all pray together, um, and then we'll be released into this community. So, well, let's pray. Lord God, I thank you and I praise you for this day. I thank you and praise you for our people here. Uh, I thank you for your presence. Uh, Lord, it is only because of your great love for us that you continue to pour out to us abundantly uh, that we know what love truly is and that we can show love to others in a radical way, a sacrificial way that you have shown to us. Lord, may this be an opportunity for us to go out and and to practice loving Decatur as you have loved us, Uh, that we would do this together, that as that idea of practice entails, it's it's not a one-time thing, but it's just an opportunity to grow in that, an opportunity to, to see how we can share your love in the ways that you have shared it with us and to let sit back and then watch you do what you do, Lord far beyond what we could ever imagine or ask for. So we pray 
that you would surprise us in great ways today, Lord, that uh, you would maybe bring conversations and connections that we wouldn't have planned on this morning, but make us open to those things, Lord. Help us not just to see tasks to be done, but people to be loved that you place before us. Let us not miss those opportunities. Lord, keep us safe in all of these things. We know you are at work. Uh, may this be a, a, a piece of, uh, that those we serve would know that they're loved by you, that as we have been blessed abundantly, we might be a blessing to them. And that Lord, through that, maybe it's uh, next week, maybe it's five years, 10 years down the road, but that these interactions, these servings we have today, that you would use those to nudge people one step closer to you. We trust you in all of this, Lord. You are so good. And I thank you for the, just the courage of our people here today, the faithfulness of the people to say, yes, I'm going to step into this, even if it might be a little uncomfortable to me, even if it's unusual, Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to step into this. And may we see that today as we leave here, that our worship doesn't end. Worship is not just about singing praises to you, coming in prayer, but Lord, as we serve others in your name, as we share your love, as we live out our lives in alignment with what you've called us to as your children, that is an act of worship, an act of thanksgiving to you. May our service today be that, an act of worship to you that's to your glory and to the benefit of all those that you place before us. Lord, we just leave this space. I don't know what's on the hearts and minds of your people here today, but we're gonna leave this space, a little bit of silence to come and just have conversation with you as we step into this. Maybe it's laying down whatever's weighing on us right now that we would lay that to you so that we might have joy in this day. Maybe it's just asking your blessing and whatever it is, Lord, we take a moment to come personally before you. Jesus, we trust you. We love you. And so we're bold to pray that prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, just one thing before we um, head into the blessing, and I know you were going to step right in there. Um, you know, this was an idea that we had, was to release you guys into the community and do an amazing work. But I just want to recognize Pastor Bill and Pastor Mark. They're the two who actually made this happen by getting everything together, getting all the locations, getting all the leaders, and actually doing the work, not me, okay? It was those two guys. So I just want to make sure we recognize them and say thank you for this as well. And Mick and Sarah taking care of a bunch of background work as well. I want yeah, to recognize them. I mean, the them. staff pulled together, Mick yeah. and Sarah, and also Andrea, but really these two guys were the ones who put in all the location work and everything, and I just want to recognize them for that and say thank you. So. Well, I would just invite you to put your arms around the people next to you and to receive this blessing from our God. Will the Lord bless you and keep you? The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his unending peace. We pray this in your mighty and precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, you know, uh, before we leave, I need to give a few instructions. So how we're going to do this is uh, we have a box stationed.
for your group. If you look at your bulletin, you can see uh, whichever group you have signed up for. There's a, a box there for you. So you go and meet at that box. You guys are going to pray as a group near that box. And then you're going to